the very first tool we're gonna we're gonna talk about is the the process map or the flowchart. This is probably our most popular tool. It's the one I personally use the most often in uh, um, in workspace. Um, it's one that I know everybody in, or, in an organization, regardless of job title, has has use for. So quick orientation where we're at right now. Over here on the left, you'll see this is our uh, what we call our project manager. It's just your navigation. Um, here's the the name of your project. This one is creatively named project so far. And this is the tool, the process map flowchart. I can rename this if I want. Right now, I only have a single tool. I can add more, and I'll, I'll do that here in a little bit. This is our main workspace for tools and where workspace gets its name. And on the right, we have uh, the task pane where I can attach a shape our data to our shapes. And, and again, I'll, I'll show you that guys that in, the, in just a little bit. The first thing, first thing we need to do is add a shape. So up here in the top left, this is our gallery of shapes. Um, here's the process shape. If you hover over these, you'll see their actual names. I don't know about you, but I almost exclusively use the process shape, otherwise known as the rectangle. There's my first shape. Now, um, I just clicked on the, the shape up in the gallery, and I clicked on my process map, and there is my shape. I'm going to start typing. I'm going to, again, creatively name this thing step one. And now I'm going to add additional shapes. Now, I could go back up here, click again, click back down again. Um, but I'm impatient. And so what I like to use is, is our, our quick connect tool. So if I hover over the shape, little triangles that, that stick out on all four sides. And if I hover over one of those, I get a mini gallery that I can add right to my shape that I've already added. And if I don't even pick from the gallery, I just click on this triangle real quick, it will just add a shape that I that I um, that I'm already uh, using right there. So it added another process shape. So let's add step two. Now we have a we have a decision to make. Call this one step three A. And step three B. Okay, and now these connectors that you see here, these between the shapes, uh, they are dynamic. So um, if I move these shapes around, the connectors will move with it. You can, see, you can even get a little uh, bunny hop there. If I um, click on the shape, or excuse me, if I click on the connector, you see I get these little red dots. I can change where the connector joins with my shape. So perhaps I want it on the side here, that makes a for a little neater of a diagram, so I'll do that. I can also choose the middle here, and the middle is kind of a, a funny one. It will basically just find the shortest path between uh, this shape and its connector shape and, and the, the uh, terminal shape, and it will move around the shape, which some people like. I, I like to have it right in the middle. I think that's nice and, and neat looking. And then I can add uh, text directly to my connector. So let's say this is a, where, I, where I go if I have a yes. I'm clicking on that connector. Here's where I go if I have a no. I can move the, the text up. I like to have my text right at the beginning, right near the decision. So I'm going to do that real quick. And the other thing you could do with that quick connect, which is when I hovered over here and I, I got my little triangles, if you have two shapes that are already uh, next to each other, I'm going to connect this to these two. And rather than draw a new shape, it, it helpfully detected that there was a shape already there for me, and it went ahead and, and connected it. Now the text on here, um, you can see these shapes come out as, as one size, but let's say um, my step here has a really long process name that takes up a lot of space. You can see my shape grew to accommodate that text. Um, if you're like me, I, I tend to be a little persnickety. I like all of my shapes to be the same size. So in that case, I'm going to look at the shape that's going to dictate size. In this case, it's this one. It's, it's taking, you know, has a lot of text. So let's make this a good size. And then once we have that, now what I can do is I can select these other shapes. So I clicked up here. I'm holding down the shift key on my keyboard. 
and I'm clicking other shapes. And now up here, I have this option to make same size. I can make them the same height, the same width, or both. And if I do both, something interesting is going to happen. Wait, it went back to the shape, the size it was. And the reason for that is because when you're when you have a bunch of shapes selected and you choose to make them all the same size, you have to tell them which shape is kind of in charge, which shape to to listen to when it comes to um, making the same size. So I'm going to undo that. That's up here in the corner, or Control Z. And let's try that again. This time I'm going to select all of my tools using the lasso. I'm going to click, and now I'm holding, I'm dragging, and I'm selecting a bunch of shapes. So now again, this, this shape is in charge. It has the blue uh, corners on it. So I'm instead going to click down here. I want this one to be in charge. I want this one to dictate the size of all the other shapes. And now we're going to try this again. And now they're all the same size. So now they're all the same size. That's great. But um, now you can see my alignment is a little out of whack. This decision shape got too big. So let's, let's move some things around here. We'll resize this decision shape back down to a reasonable size. So now you can see again things are things are out of alignment. So uh, another feature you can you can use to to make your your process uh, map nice and and neat um, is to align them. So here again I. I Clicked and dragged to select a bunch of shapes all at once. This one's in charge because it's got the blue line, and I'm going to line them in the center. Same thing with this one. That one I can just drag right over, but I could have aligned those as well. Okay, so this is a pretty basic process map, but let's say my uh, process is actually cross-departmental, and I want to I want to indicate that. So these first two steps happen up in R and D. Um, and these steps down here at the bottom, they, they uh, take part in, in engineering. So we're going to insert some departments. Now in Workspace, they're called departments and phases. Um, and a lot of other applications are called swim lanes. So if you're looking for a swim lane diagram in Workspace, they're called departments and phases. So I'm going to insert my first department. Um, at this point, I, uh, I only have a single department. All shapes have to be in a department if, there's, if there are any departments. So it just Put all the shapes in one department. Let's go ahead and add another one above it. This one is R and D. Click down here. Call this one engineering. Okay. So we need to move these these top shapes up here. So I'm going to click and drag again. And I can't fit step two up there. So let's just put this right here. And then I'm just going to drag. First off, I'm going to fix this because it bothers me. We're going to get our alignment right again. There we go. OK, so now I'm just going to drag this line down. And my shapes are moving with it. So sometimes that's helpful. You want your shapes to move with your with your departments. In my case, I. I created my shapes before my department. So I kind of want to move my departments around my shapes. So this is a, a really key trick. If there's one thing to take away from the process map section of this, this webinar, this is it. Hold down your Alt key. Alt key on your keyboard holds a lot of power. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key right now. And I'm going to click and drag again. And now all of a sudden, I can move these departments without my shapes moving with it. I'm going to make this guy a little smaller. Uh, and same thing with phases. If I move this without holding the Alt key, you can see my shapes move with it. If I hold down the Alt key, which I'm doing right now, they move independently. Okay. So now I have a cross-functional uh, process map or one with, with swim lanes. But it's a little plain, so uh, let's gussy it up just a, a little bit. I'm going to, again, click and drag, select all of my, my shapes. Let's give it a, see, a nice teal color, let's say. And this is a, a design trick, if you will. Monochrome is in. So um, these borders that are gray and the, the inside is blue, we're going to make them the, the same color. So it looks nice. 
Now you can see it also put the fill on my connectors, and I think that's a little bit much. So I'm going to click, I'm holding down the control key, and I'm going to click multiple connectors. And let's take the fill, make that a little lighter for those things. And now this kind of clashes with these blues, this blue background. So let me select my departments. Let's give that just simple gray background. And these rulers and the grid, that's really helpful when I'm building my process map, but now I'm ready to, to present it. So let's turn that off. If you go up here to this view tab in the, the ribbon, you can turn off the ruler and you can turn off the grid. Now it's ready to present. And in fact, if you want to even put it on, a, let's say, a PowerPoint slide, um, you could right click and send directly to Microsoft PowerPoint. I'm going to do this and hopefully it doesn't make my presentation later go crazy. So I have a PowerPoint presentation open. So I put it way down here at the bottom. And now I can present from this. Okay. Let's go back over to Workspace. Okay, so that's the process map um, the, uh, or the flow chart.